you feel you have a savings goal, you have an investment goal, we can start. So the first thing I'll tell people is that it is not too late to start. Why? Some may say it's very, it sounds very simple, but it's easier said than done. What is actually how small one can start? All right, welcome back. Uh, it's our Finance Friday segment, and my guests are joining me right here. We're looking at investment options for young people, for young investors, because there are investment options for different categories of people. It depends on the kind of risk you know you need to take. So my guests are with me right here. Ibrahim Shalang is a financial analyst. He's to my uh, immediate right. Ibrahim, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. Stella George is a banker in finance uh, planning consultant welcome to the program thank you so much all right let's get started we have so many things to talk about but let's you know put them into perspective very quickly um i also know that personal finance or finance anything around finance economy is also very very technical but why uh, this segment was created was to be able to break down a lot of things in the simplest forms yeah. and i also realized that um nigerians some may have money really so I may even have 100,000 naira in the bank, 200,000, 300, 500K, but they really don't know what to, to do with it. It will just be in the bank for like three, four, five years. Instead, they'll be receiving alerts on card maintenance fee, <laughs> uh, we are maintaining your account and all of that. But that money can work for you. And that was why I created this Finance Friday segment. So let's get started. I'll be a bit biased, Ibrahim. Mm. Let me start with <laughs> No problem. Stella ladies first. <laughs> yes, ladies first. And I really don't get to talk to a lot of women on the show, mm. you know. So le let me start with you, Stella. Why do you yes. think it's really essential why young people should start investing? Mm. Thank you very much, Nancy. I think it's essential because if you cultivate that investment culture from a young age, it becomes very easy at an, maybe during retirement or even your middle age to continue to invest, co to continue to earn. And let me also say that it starts with earning, actually. Mm. You need to look at your earning potential, moving to your savings, then investment. So when you start to introduce children to earning first, like I was telling him while we were seated there, that I know a, a girl of six years that is into popcorn production, and she's making so much money. Her father is the one that introduced her to that. And I tell you, there's no way that girl will grow up not knowing what to do in terms of investments, in terms of making money, and creating wealth for herself. So it's very important, critical at this at the at young stage that we start to introduce children to earning, to savings, and to investment because it becomes easy when they grow up. Mm. Ibrahim, what are your own views? I like the aspect you br brought in. You must earn first. You have to earn. You earn, you save, you invest. It's even from your savings, you now get money yeah. to invest. Um, what, what's your own view, getting young people? Well, uh, when I mean young, yeah. Young, really, you know, what, what age is even young? What age are we looking at? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, look, um, financial literacy, financial planning, the earlier you start off um, understanding, because it's, it's actually about discipline, right? Mm. Uh, as, you know, as, as Stella said, on the one that had worked for over 30 years, and by the time he was asked to leave, he doesn't even have a roof over his head. And the question was, that, does he even know? that he needs to do this, put this plan in place, that at this point in his life, he should save to get a home. Or even if you, you are not saving, you should take a credit. There's nothing wrong with taking a credit to invest in an asset. So there's a huge gap. We need to start, and that's why I think this program is very, very key. We need to start teaching, because sometimes we assume that people know, but they sure. don't really know. Some people have cash, but they don't know that this cash becomes nothing if you don't invest it in something that will earn you more more yeah. yes sure. all right what investment opportunities now because for people list, uh, watching us right now or, or people listening uh, to this program will say okay i've heard all what you're saying what are the investment opportunities okay uh, i think it first of all starts with having a goal um mm. a lot of people just you know throw the money into something without necessarily knowing what do i what do i want this money to do for me mm. um, you know, it's good to have long-term goals. 
medium term goals, short term exactly. goals. And from there, you start determining, de determining how you're going to invest or save and invest your funds. Um, now, there's a vast array of uh, investment options. The traditional investment options are your equities, so stock markets, uh, and then you have bonds and fixed income. These are the traditional ones. Um, in Nigeria, you know, perhaps not so uh, attractive in terms of returns. Uh, then you have you know, alternatives. Uh, when we talk about alternatives, Nowadays, you have, uh, you have the fintech space, you have agriculture, you have uh, you know, microfinance. So there's a vast array of things. Um, I would always caution against things that you know, give you these wondrous returns that mm. uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, people get sucked mm -hmm. into that. Yes, and that, yes. that comes with not having a, a, a goal, mm. right? Uh, people get sucked into, oh, I'll give you 100% return <laughs> overnight. I mean, if, if there was something so viable that gives 100% return overnight, I'm very sure you know, everybody would be rich, right? Mm. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's, it's always important to have a goal and along smart principles, specific, measurable, uh, time-bound, realistic, that's another thing. Once you've determined those goals, you start looking at, okay, what is my risk appetite? Am I, you know, if I give you two options, for instance, if I tell you, give me 100 uh, thousand naira, and in in a year, I'll give you back hundred and ten thousand. That's a ten percent return. Are you comfortable with that? That's one option. I, I could also give you an option of give me hundred thousand naira. Potentially, I can give you hundred and fifty, but potentially, I could give you back eighty. You know, you start weighing up these things, and age is also a determinant. Mm -hmm. At what age do you start? To, you know, do you st stop taking some risks? Mm -hmm. uh, you see people that reach retirement in Nigeria, you know, worked in the civil service for, for you know, 30, 30, 40 years and reach retirement. And when you ask them, what are you going to do with your retirement benefits? I'm going to start a business. Not necessarily bad if you've already been, you know, if you already are aware of the business space and know the risks attached to the business. But, you know, at the age of 60 is not the time to start taking some risks with the last, you know, cash pot that you're going to have. So usually advise, you know, take some risks a bit earlier so that even if you do have a, you know, a fallback, you can, you can recover. But once you've reached retirement and you no longer have you know, cash flow coming in, then you know, your risk appetite really needs to uh, reduce. And you start looking at fixed capital, uh, capital protecting investments. Mm. Yeah. Stella, do you want to come in just quickly? And okay. let's start taking, because I see some questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would like to start from the retirement age that you talked about. I'd like to say that it's not until you retire that you start planning for retirement. Mm. It's important to start planning for retirement even at that early 20s. Sure. There's nothing wrong with putting out a savings account where you say this particular account is for my retirement. Nothing absolutely wrong with it. So I, have, I know a, a woman, she's 63, she's re retired now, but 15 years before her retirement, she started a poultry farm just behind her house. So you don't need so much capital to start something before you retire. And so when it was time for her to retire, she actually planned a party. And people were wondering, why are you so excited? You are retiring. And she said, she's going back to her business. So you, if you plan for your retirement, and she's going to scale it up, she's going to um, employ more people, it will help her to move around a bit. So someone that's, of course, yeah, retired does not mean you're tired. Someone that has been active of all her life and all of a sudden he wants her to go sit down depending on her children and all that. No. So that should be the plan. You have to start up something. In the agricultural value chain, so many things to do. Fish farming, poultry, imputes, everything, fertilizer. You can just start something. But make sure that you're moving about and you are not dependent. 100%. Let me sit down and wait for my children. And if, what if the children become wayward? <laughs> what guarantees you that these children sure. will not go prodigal? Sure. So you have to start planning for your retirement and you look forward to it and you don't dread retirement. Yeah, and that also brings me, just like with what you said, fish farming and co. Mm. Uh, before you also enter into any investment or any business, try as much as possible to lend the ropes or understand what that business exactly. is yes. about. Exactly. Yes. Not because of everyone mm. is going into poultry or mm. pig mm. now. Mm. Yeah. Like, okay, just into yes. Yes. yes, it is essential that you must have knowledge. knowledge. Speak to mm. those that are there. Yes. Speak to those that are doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are the, which areas are you most challenged? Mm -hmm. This, what season, for example, poultry, what season 
do chickens fall sick the most? All those very important. important yes, exactly. you have to. You know, exactly. but like chicken now, we are saying chicken now, mm. so you go and put on that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know, the, typical, the typical situation yes. is, ah, I know my, I had to say, my neighbor is, is in, my friend is there. Yes, then again, you'll be like, oh no, they say chicken <laughs> business you know? is working. Yeah, exactly. I put 500,000 and it finished. Why would not it not finish? Did you how to, did you learn? Yeah. What kind of food do you give to the chicken? chicken what, yes. what breed of chicken? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what time of day they drink water? Yeah, uh, exactly. no, that's what very medicine important. you should be you putting should be in them, the uh, water? You don't know. You yeah. want to... Planning seems yeah. to be at, a, yes. at a, you know, yes. the premium in this country. Yes. You don't seem so. to sit and plan mm. ahead. Because yes. yeah. You avoid so no, many, what you so said many is, issues. What is very key. I have to break it down like that. It's not only chicken business. It's other businesses. There are other businesses. I need to break it down so that my people, you understand what they talk. Yes, so for the middle age, you know, that's when we say that the earning potential is high. Yeah. Uh, 30, 40, and, and that's also when the expenses it is also, also high. Exactly. So you also have to learn to balance it. Yes. And I was talking to him. Where does that balance come? Oh, yes. yes. Where does yes. the balance come? So you can't tell me that because you invested in a long-term asset, you, you can't pay your short-term obligation. Mm. You're only your landlord, for crying out loud. You, you can't wait until the land you bought in Maraba starts yielding. Start yielding. Yeah, exactly. So at that age, you need to have um, a portfolio of investments that is mixed, short term, long term, and medium term. So you need to be able to have assets that are liquid. They, yeah, are, they yeah. can easily be converted to cash. cash. Exactly. So that if you mm -hmm. ha your ch have all your children, you have to pay their yeah. school fees. Yeah. So if you're married at that time, husband and wife can come together to get a house. You can take a mortgage to buy to get your house and stop paying landlord. That's the stage where you have to think about saving for your children's education. That's an investment on its own. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, let's try as much as possible to take a few comments coming in on our Twitter. Uh, this person says, what profitable e-commerce business can young people do, especially as interns with little skill sets? Profitable e-commerce business because mm. e-commerce is another sure. interesting yes. exactly. area, yeah. and a lot of people are doing e-commerce now. Mm. A lot of people are even selling things even on social media exactly. without offices. Literally. Their houses are their offices. Like you see, online store, mm. Mm. no mm -hmm. pickup. Mm -hmm. They will just send delivery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, a, lo a lot of times people don't actually even have the goods. Uh, you know, yes, you you you. you you know, set up a platform where mm. you're advertising goods, and mm. when you get the order, you now place the order with, uh, you know, yes. in, well, maybe not China anymore yeah. because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because of coronavirus. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, so look, the the intermediary business. For instance, let's take Uber. Uber doesn't own any assets, right? But it has a platform that pulls, uh, you know, supply and demand. Mm. So it's the same thing with e-commerce. You don't necessarily have to uh, have, you know, so much uh, capital invested. But you're creating a platform and uh, you know using digital marketing to you know go out there and look for customers so that's one aspect um i mean look there's a vast array of things happening in the in the online space now mm. um probably not uh, the best person nowadays but you have all these influencers and and you know all the cool kids nowadays that mm. are all over social media they're earning you know real money and it's it's really about creating value. You, know, mm. you said earlier about yes. wealth creation. It's yeah. about creating value. Mm -hmm. If you're able to provide a platform that uh, you know people see the value in it and are willing to put money in it, then I guess that's the you know <laughs> it's a viable investment opportunity. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. I also think that it also has to align with your passion. What are you interested in? So if you're interested in fashion, you know clothing. Online, you can make a lot of money just advertising your products. You don't need to own a shop. In fact, I buy some things without even seeing the owners of the, sure. yeah. of the shop. Yes, they deliver to me. Mm -hmm. I pay them. Mm -hmm. You know, I transfer money and they send it to me. So you don't. You, you need to identify where does my passion lie. Is it in, if if you are not the type that uh, you know loves to do fashion business? If you go into it, you might get tired, get frustrated, and you leave the business. I, I know a friend, we finished from the same school. She studied geography, but today she's into fashion. She's into fashion, so how does she do it? She gets the bulk purchase that people have done. She doesn't sew. So someone does the bulk uh, uh, production, she takes it off and she displays it. And that's how she sells. She mm. makes her money. So, so many things we can sell online, so many. Okay, let's yes. take this other comment from that Andy on Twitter. He's saying poultry or pigry. Uh, real estate with farming, I'm skeptical because castle can come and feed on your farm. 
It's raising a very vital point. Look, mm. Because Katuka yeah. come and feed without anybody. That's this. The headsman. Head you mm. see cows going up and down in Abuja, <laughs> even in main, on, main on, street. On, on main, yeah. So they can go into your farm. Nobody will pay you for that. Mm. Uh, for that. So mm. yeah. you're quite right. With mm. farming, I'm skeptical because cattle can come feed on your farm and everything goes bust. Mm. Stocks outside Nigeria is also an option. I don't mind. But it needs attention because of how volatile it can it be. Mm. Sure. Yes, I, I think it's it's important to understand that every investment has a level of risk. Yes, uh, you know, high risk, high return. So mm. you need to understand the risks, the inherent risks in that investment. And this mm. is what this, that's why I said about the planning stage. Mm. Um, you know, sit down and if you can't do it yourself, if you don't have the capacity, you look for investment advisors. You mm -hmm. look for financial advisors that can uh, that, that have the, the capabilities of doing that. But understand the, the risks. Right. Uh, most most times we, uh, you know, we talk about the returns and you know what we're getting, but we don't see the other side because nobody likes to uh, talk about the uh, you know the pitfalls. Mm, yes. It's always the, the you know the fantastic returns. But yeah. understand that, and it makes you uh, better informed in terms of how much you want to put to it. Mm -hmm. And if you lose that money, you don't get a heart attack because you already know that there was this risk. You know, Attached that's. To it. Uh, yeah. Okay, Adeyiga Bisoyo on Twitter also says, how can persons between the ages of 25 and 35 decipher credible investment platforms, knowing full well the kind of country we are, that no one organization can be trusted except <laughs> tested? <Yeah. laughs> Again. Before you yeah. end trust, we have to test you. Yeah, exactly, yes. exactly, exactly. I'd always say, um, you know, the standard options, look for regulated uh, businesses. Mm -hmm. Look for the ones that are, you know, either uh, by the security the Securities and Exchange Commission, that's SEC, uh, you know, or CBN or other regulatory uh, bodies. That's the first stage. If you're going outside of that space, then, you know, it's probably going to be about researching uh, who are the managers behind the, the business. Is it even a, a, a structured business or is it literally a Ponzi scheme that's mm. running around? Yeah. What are the underlying assets of that, uh, of that business? business? Is it a business that's selling something? Is it a business that's creating something? Understand what it's all about. Don't just fall for the, oh, give me this and I'll give you this return. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially when it seems astronomical. Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself, what is that person making in profit to be able to give me this amount of return? These are some of the fundamental I'm questions. I'm also so. seeing some Ponzi schemes right now that are masquerading mm. as real yeah. investments. Because <laughs> it's like a lot more people are getting creative with fraud sure. mm. in terms of... Uh, they are all Ponzi pyramid schemes, but they will masquerade it in a, in a in form a, that mm. people will not know that at the end of the day, they are Ponzi schemes. Exactly. Yeah. And these ages are those people that fall from... Well, susceptible yes. to that. Yes. Exactly. What, okay, what I always advise is that once you see the high level of return, please know that the risk is also very high. Because you can tell me that if I give you one million, you are giving me one million back or 800,000 Naira back. And um, the first question is, you should ask, how are you turning this money over? What is this venture that is that paying you, you? That to turn to give me this return. That is giving you this return. What is the underlying thing you're doing? You are doing. That's the question people are not asking. They're just giving money. They say they will give us this one. They mm -hmm. say they will give us. They are in too many things. Oil mm -hmm. and gas. Mm -hmm. This one, that one. Virtual. Virtual. Yeah. Everything yeah. is virtual. They, they have website. They, like, <laughs> they, they have everything. Mm -hmm. So you are giving them 100,000 and they're giving you 800, I mean, um, 80%. I've seen 80%. I've seen 100%. And I always ask the question. Can I know the underlining business? Yeah. What, what is that, that business that's yielding this much? much yeah. You understand? Returns. Legally. Legally. <laughs> yeah. Do you understand? If yeah. it's your personal business, I say, okay, you, you are the one that put the mark up. But these ones, they are just collecting money from people. They are robbing Peter to pay Paul. To pay Paul. Sure. That's what okay. is happening. It don't happen on Twitter. It says, with one million naira, what investment option can we be involved in? People in the early 40s. Perhaps... It don't happen. Mm. Has uh, a millionaire now? No. What investment yeah. options can they be? Especially people in their early forties. Mm. I, I, you see, uh, whenever I get these kind of questions, mm. I always say to you, what you know, what type of return do you want? For instance, mm. it's not just uh, you know saying I'm in my forties, I have one millionaire. What do you want to do with that one million? Do you want that one million to be you know uh, one point one million after a year? Are you comfortable with that? Or do you want that one million to be two million after a year? So you have to, first of all, uh, align the investment with the objectives. What are your objectives for that fund? Is that fund going to be a rainy day fund for, you know, for the next 20 years? 
are you willing to leave it in, uh, you know, in equities that will grow in 20 years, growth stocks or, or something that pays dividends? Are you looking for short returns? Maybe you want to buy a car or you're planning to get married because you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's another option. You know? uh, so these are some of the questions. I don't, I don't like those questions that say, oh, what should I invest in? Because mm. it, everybody has different objectives. Mm. Everybody has different. I can tell you with that one million, you can go into poultry, you can go into <laughs> you know, uh, mm. farming, yam, you can put it in a microfinance bank. Mm. You can, I could give you so many options. But you as an individual, what do you want, you know, what are your goals for that, for that fund? Start from there. And also, what risk are you willing to take? You know, as I mentioned earlier, if, that, if you invest in something and all your one million goes, are you going to have a heart attack and, God forbid, <laughs> collapse mm. at the age of 40? Mm. These are some of the things you have to uh, figure out before uh, asking what to invest in. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Stella, do you... Well, at least it, you're a okay, banker. If, <laughs> if, if I come to you with a million... A million. And you want to invest. We perhaps some of these traditional investment options. Mm. Well, for now, the rates are mm. not looking so good, mm. you know, when it comes to, let's say, treasury bills or fixed deposits. So it depends, just like you said, what are your goals? Are you ready or willing to take 5% on this per annum? If you're not willing, you want to go bullish, you know, I've seen if you can get a car for $1 million and put it to... Uber use, yeah. you know, if, if especially if you're working and someone is doing and returning, I hear they return twenty five, thirty thousand every week. Sure. You know, it's, it's it's a good investment, and you 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 saving, and when it grows, you can also reinvest it. But you must so also be careful because it, the car will break will down. Break down. Yeah. You buy fuel. All those things are exactly. also costs. Yeah, they also cost. So, so it depreciates. Yes, it depreciates. Yes. yes, there are so many investments. You can go, go get a plot of land because, yeah. like we. I uh, was talking uh, earlier before we came in that a plot of land in this town 15 years ago that was going for 1 million. If you go touch it now, I'm sure it's almost 20 million or 15 million in this same Abuja. At least I know of a three bedroom, completed three bedroom that was going for 4 million. And some of my friends that uh, you know, were introduced to that estate said, ah, no, this place is it's bush. It's bush. I can't go there. I know that's you the know, word. I told him, one of them actually had to go after five or six years to live there as a tenant. Mm -hmm. How terrible. Yeah. Do you understand? A place you refuse, you had the money. You're supposed to buy that house. You said it's a bush. You can't buy that place. After five years, someone else bought that place. You went there to live as a tenant. So these are the things. So if you have one million and they tell you there's a land in Maraba, genuine, there's paper is there. And you know that if you invest it there, it's not going to distort any other thing. Please do. Because it will appreciate over time. Mm. Either you sell it or you you yeah. develop it. I just want to add, perhaps mm. if uh, you're still not sure of what to do with that one million, whilst you're thinking about it, you can invest in a money market mutual fund, for instance. Protects your capital, gives yeah. you, you know, mm. decent returns. Whilst you're thinking, well, of, you're thinking yeah, of what, what else to do, to do. Uh, yeah. rather than perhaps mm. just leaving it in a it, yeah. non, you know, non non yeah. non yeah. Uh, yeah. account. Invest okay. in, and there are you know, some good ones out there that, mm. uh, that you can invest in. Okay. Any other thing before we go? Uh, forex yeah. trading. Mm. <laughs> very <laughs> volatile. <laughs> that's very that's volatile. Very yeah, cryptocurrency. <laughs> <risky. laughs> they're all in the same uh, yeah. bracket. Yeah. You know. mm. Highly risky. And, you know, the, if you don't understand the fundamentals Mental. to some of mm. these things, just, you know, <laughs> best, I, you know, unless you're willing to take risk that mm. uh, you don't mind losing mm. your funds, fine. But and there yeah. are some yeah. other investment um, options. Too. You don't even need to be a farmer. So there are some other platforms whereby exactly. you invest money. Yeah. They, they use your monies to support farmers and all of that. Exactly. When they yes. sell those goods or produce, mm. yeah. they give you your returns. Your returns. Yes. And you, you see a reasonable yes. return. Yeah. So you Not must be very careful yes. and also yes. understand mm. where your money is going, going to be because when mm. it comes to money, it's a matter of the heart. Oh. <laughs> it is, <laughs> so. it's a matter of the heart. Yes. Touch someone's money now, you're uh, touching the person. That is why <laughs> this segment is very essential yeah. that you should always be watching and this show. Yeah. So, yes. I want to say thank you very much. Yeah, thank for you. Coming. Oh, do you guys, yes, uh, yes. Do you yes. what I'd like to say, yeah, through? before we go, is that. Um, there's this Chinese proverb that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years, years ago. ago. The second best time is, is now. now. Exactly. So if you've not started saving or investing, or if you have not even started earning, please start now. It's not too late. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Start now. There's no 
there is no time that is late, as it were. So far, you are still alive. Right? Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yes. So just start it now. If you've not started earning, start earning. Start just doing something. Something. Start doing something. Don't tell me, oh, Nancy, there's no job. There's no job, but your hands are there. <laughs> <laughs> so do something. Even mm -hmm. if it's pure water, mm -hmm. start selling. And we are carrying yeah, exactly. phones yes. that can start yes. a business. You know, yes. I understand <laughs> the nation, the economy is bad, mm -hmm. yeah. but start something. Mm -hmm. Please, then you earn, from there you save, then from you there invest. you invest. That's All right. right. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's the much we can take on today's edition of the program. I've been speaking with Ibrahim Shalang, a financial analyst to my immediate right, and Stella George, a banker and a finance planning consultant to my far uh, right. We've been uh, looking at uh, investment options for, let's like say, millennials. Yes, millennials, young people. Uh, but that does not mean those outside that bracket did not get one or two things from what we said. Thank you all for being a part of the program. You can be rest assured we'll continue this segment. That was why it was created, uh, to you know, fill in the gap for financial literacy and financial inclusion. So I'll see you all again. Be the best you can be. Be the change you want to see. I am Nancy Naji. Bye now.